Hey everyone, welcome back to Nomen Sky, Beaver Bum here. Today I want to talk to you about mineral deposit farming. Now, since Waypoint, mineral farming has been seriously nerfed. Not only the diminishing returns have been increased, but also the values of activated indium and all the uh, stellar metals have drastically reduced as well. So today I'm going to show you how you can build yourself the best mineral farm which is gold for the moment. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to be talking about how to do this from the beginning. Now, in case you're not a beginner and you already have the blueprints and you know how to work, you can just jump ahead to the chapter you want to start off so you don't have to watch the beginner information. It takes about one hour, one hour and a half to reach the anomaly when you play a new game and that is when you reach the anomaly. By then you will also have unlocked the base computer, some building parts already. You will also have learned how to get salvage data. Now, what you need, we need about 42 salvage data collected so that we can also unlock some building parts. And that is why you can find me now at the anomaly, because that is where we have to be first. If we go down here, the construction research station, and what we want to do, we want to unlock a few building parts. You can see I have a 44 salvage data here, which is enough for what I want to do. And we need to go to the page where we find all the mining industrial modules that's the section we need to be and here we need to unlock a few building parts now first of all we want to unlock the mineral extractor which is going to cost us 10 salvage data then we want to unlock the supply depot which is going to cost us another 10 salvage data we also want the supply pipe and then we actually what we want we want to have the electromagnetic generator depends a bit on what you want to use for power but it is preferred to use the generator because it's going to cost you way less than the uh, material you will need for solar panels and batteries. Either way, we need to unlock the solar panel anyway. So let's unlock it, solar panel, and then we can unlock the electromagnetic generator. If you want to use the solar panel and the battery, you will have to unlock, of course, the battery as well. All right, so that is all the resources you need for this mine. Oh, by the way, uh, we also need to buy the survey device. If you go to EOS right here, you will find the survey device right here. So this is going to be unlocked by first unlocking the waveform recycler and then the survey device. This will cost you about 440 nanites. So if you un unlock this, you will need this to find your goal as well. So definitely unlock the survey device and the wave recycler. You could also unlock the positron ejector if you go in here. You will find the positron ejector right here. Now, this will cost you about 150 nanites to unlock this. Uh, this is also going to help you to mine uh, resources easier with your ship. I will show you how to do that uh, once I'm showing you the guide. All right, so this is what we need. So what we need to do, we need to find ourselves a planet with gold. And that is going to be the main search now. Then let's see if I can find a planet in the system we are at. If not, we're going to have to go and check our other systems. So this one here down has copper and uranium. Uh, we do need some uranium to build our uh, survey device, I think, or the positron ejector. So we might have to land there as well. Let's see what this has. This one has uh, copper, paraffinium and silver. This one has paraffinium and copper. Paraffinium and salt. I think we do not have any gold on this system. How many plants are there here? Uh, four of them, so we do not seem to have any gold in here. So nothing is found here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to warp to a new system. Uh, let me just charge my hyperdrive. There we go. And let's uh, jump to a new galaxy. So we're looking for a system with gold. The best thing to do is actually find a system with a lot of planets. So, nope, not there. So you can have a little bit more luck and chance to find more planets in one system. Copper and gold. Here we go. So now we have a plant right there, which has copper, gold and silver. So we're looking for gold. Now, to make ourselves the uh, survey device, we will need magnetic resonators, quantum computers and wiring looms. So we need some money for sure. And we need to buy that from the space station. So with some luck, we can get the quantum computer and the magnetic resonator from here. If not, we'll have to go and look around on other systems, all the trading posts, see if any of the pilots sell it. So first of all, let's go and check the trading terminal. There's two of them in the space station, in each space station. So nothing here. You can see the wiring lumen is going to cost us about 72,000 per piece. So I will need definitely way more money. I don't know if I have anything to sell here that might give me that money, but I don't think so. Anyway, we don't really need money for the wiring looms. I will show you a trick in a bit on how you can get them cheaply. 
There's another trading terminal right here on the back. This one is selling magnetic resonators, which is nice. We need, how much did we need again? Uh, we need three of them. Now, what is the price of that? So we can just buy three of these. Now we need to find the quantum computer and the wiring loom. Now the quantum computer is most likely will be able to be bought from one of the pilots here. So I don't know if we're going to have enough money to buy it. Here we go. Quantum computer. I just can't buy one. Perfect. So the only thing we need now is wiring looms. And we don't have enough money for that. So what we're going to be doing instead is we're going to go to the vendors upstairs and buy some upgrade modules. As you can see, you can buy cheap modules here. If I would buy the hyperdrive module, for example, and we install this now in our starship, and then we deconstruct it, you will get yourself one wiring loom. And that should be enough, I think, to build your analyze advisor. Now we need two wiring looms. So what we can do, we buy another one on this guy here. Let's buy the um, pulse engine here. Install it on our ship again. Dismantle it. Now we have two wiring looms. This is going to be much cheaper than having to buy in with money. And now we can build ourselves the survey device. All right, let's jump in our ship and go and fly to the planet with the gold deposits. So for this farm, we want to find two things. We want to find a mineral deposit hotspot and we want to find a power hotspot nearby. We're going to be focusing on the mineral hotspot first. So we're looking for a hotspot that has gold. If you find an S-Class, then that's great. Then you need way less extractors to get your resources you need. In the end, it doesn't really matter on how much you need the hotspot itself. The diminishing returns has really broken the amounts of resources you get anyway. All right, so now we're going to go and open the scanner. As you can see on the bottom of the screen here, there is a few selections. You have the analyze mode there. This now is just a scanning mode, which means I will be able to scan items and also analyze them. So this is not what we need right now. The next one is target sweep, which is not important now because we do not have any mission or objective. Then we have the electrical power survey. So now with this, we will be able to look for a power source. This is the mineral survey. This is for looking for mineral deposits. And this one is the gas survey. Uh, we do not need any gas. We're looking for mineral. If I look to the left, you can hear. If you listen now, you can hear that there's a ping on the left of our ear. So if I move my camera, it still pings to the left. There we go. If it has this short high ping, that means I'm now directed straight at that hotspot. If I would look to that side, you can hear that the hotspot is now to the right. So let's just walk in that direction and let's see what hotspot we will find. So we have a C-class hotspot in front of us. Let's see if it's gold. And we need to get into a range of 5U before we can analyze the hotspot itself. All right, here we are. Let's analyze it. This is a gold hotspot, which now we can start mining if we want to. You can look for a higher class hotspot. This is going to allow you to use less mineral extractors to get the same amount of resources. But uh, let's just work on the C-class right here. So the first thing we want to do, we want to mark this terrain here. Now what we're going to look, we're going to look for an electrical hotspot. So let's just look for a hotspot. You can see there is one nearby, uh, right there, 270 U away. All right, so we have a hotspot right here and then we have our electrical hotspot right there. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to move our character in the center of that. So let's move until we are like 150 to that deposit. So I think if we build here, that should be okay. So let's build our base computer here. And let's claim it. And let's also give it a name. It's going to be Gold Farm. There we go. All right, so now we need to start building. The problem is that I do not have enough resources to build all that. We will need to go and mine a lot of resources to be able to build everything we need. Now, we need to find some chromatic metal. That means we will have to mine resources that we can refine chromatic metal. Uh, there should be, as you can see, there is some silver which you cannot use. We need... There's a lot of silver around here. Copper deposit right there. We can mine that and refine it. There's another copper deposit right there. So we will go and mine that copper and then refine that in chromatic metal. But we need a lot more resources as well. We need some ferrite dust, we need carbon. I will show all the resources I'm using on the screen right now so you can have an idea of what you need. 
Now, before we start mining, we want to install on the ship, we want to install the positron ejector. As you can see, for that we will need two wiring loom and 200 uranium. Now, once again, we can get some nanites if we want to find some wiring loom, get some nanites, buy two slots, install and di disable them, and then you will get the wiring loom. So we need some more nanites for sure. And the next thing we need as well is, of course, uranium. So let's see if there's any planet we scanned for that actually had uranium. All right, let's, uh, let's fly to that planet right there. That one has uranium and let's go and collect some. This could be the uranium. Right, this, this could be uranium. Let's land here. This is uranium. There we go. So let's uh, switch to the um, drain manipulator. Make the small beam so we can mine more of it in one go. We need in total 200 uranium. I would mine more because it's a good resource to also charge your landing gear. All right, how much do we have? 255. That's enough. Now that we have this, we need to find some wiring looms as well. For that, we do prefer to use some nanites to get the wiring looms from the modules. We can scan some plants. And then when you upload these, they will also gonna give us some nanites as well. Three here, three there. Not the most amazing. We got 290. That should be enough. Go and go to the space station again. So let's buy one of these and let's buy that one here. Now these we can install. And then of course we can also dismantle them again. Which is gonna give us two wiring loom we need. And now on the ship we can install the Positron Ejector, which is an amazing weapon to mine with. Alright, let's move to our planet again. Let's see if there's any planet nearby that has some um, pebbles, copper, rusted metal. This might have actually quite some ferrite. Also has copper, so we need quite some copper as well. Alright, now as, as we get closer to the surface, you will see a lot of these pebbles right here. Now we can shoot it with the Fulton Cannon or we just switch to the Positron Ejector and just shoot the terrain. And you will see that you are starting to collect a lot of resources. Because of the weapon being quite easily overloaded, it will take some time to um, recharge again. But you can see that the amount of resources you are getting now, you can see I'm already having thousands ferrite tests. We are already starting to collect pure ferrite and all that. So you can just shoot the terrain and this is how you get yourself the resources. You can do the same with carbon. If you find a planet with carbon, you can also do that. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to mine all the resources I need for building this. And I will be back with you once I get them all done. All right, we are here at the uh, mineral deposit. So we're going to try and find the maximum of our mineral deposit. 39. All right. So here we are approximately at the maximum. So we do have some walls and wood. So I'm going to place a wooden wall here. I'm going to place a wooden floor here. And I'm going to delete that again. So I can move my character up there now to see what are my resources. So I can just move my character up there and try to find that 40%. This might be a little bit more challenging because finding full percentage in um, a C class is going to be a little bit tougher than finding the 100% in an S class. So I think we might be happy with the 39% in total. All right, now that we have put ourselves on the 40% approximately, let's go and select ourselves a wire. We're going to place that wire between our legs, cycle to the supply pipe. We're going to free place it, place it here, pull it out, then go out of the build camera, move our character away. Place the pipe up like that, cycle to the wire and place it. Now, this connector here in the center, that is going to be our full percentage of our build. Now, if you are not a glitch builder and you do not want to glitch build, that's okay. You can just stack all your extractors on top of each other like that. You can just place your extractor on top of here and then put another extractor on top of that. That is possible. Uh, just that you know, this is going to definitely reduce the um, percentages because you cannot build this 100% on top of each other. You will see they will start to drift after a while. So if you want to do this perfectly, I would advise you to do some glitch building, but if you don't want to do glitch building, it is possible to just stack uh, on top of each other. I'm going to do some glitching. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this floor here and let's uh, wire glitch that floor on that here, like that. So now this floor is perfectly centered on that wire and we're going to bring this floor up by two floors up here. We're going to snap another door wall on that and we're going to reverse wire glitch from here and pull the wire to the connector of the floor. 
then take out floor, reverse wire glitch again, and then connect it right here. So we have now a straight wire, also perfectly centered on the location. And we're going to do this a few times more. There we go. So now I have four connectors on each of these. And on each of these connectors, we're going to glitch a mineral extractor. So if we now go to the mineral extractor here, and we're going to wire glitch it on that connector. So just wire glitch it like that. It's going to be perfectly placed. And I can do this here as well. And now you see that they are going to be perfectly lined up. They're going to be perfectly on the 100% one. So what we're going to do, we need to glitch more on one location. But I do not have any power yet to know how much is this extracting. If I open this mineral extractor, it's only going to say that's the amount of density you have. But it doesn't say how much we are extracting. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our power. We're going to collect some power and then pull wires to this location here. So let's uh, find our power hotspot. 240 U away. All right, we should be at the hotspot. So the same what we're going to do, we're going to build ourselves a floor again. Delete this one here. Jump on top and let's try to find the maximum percentage of our power. I think, I think this is a good location here. So again, we're going to go to our wire. Now, we most likely won't be able to place it between our legs again. Uh, so we're going to cycle to the supply pipe. Place it between the legs. Get our character out of the way. Cycle to the wire and place that wire here. There we go. And now we're going to glitch our floor on that. Like that. And now we glitch the electromagnetic generator. So we're going to wire glitch it on that connector right there. Now we can check how much is this generating. This is generating 148 KPS. And we're doing this at 49% strength. If you're going to have like an S-Class power spot, you will get way more power out of that. And the power hotspots do not have any diminishing returns. So let's just uh, glitch a whole bunch of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I wire glitched 10 of them on the same location. Uh, if you don't want to do this, you can always put them also in a stack, put them on top of each other, and that is also going to work. Now, you can see if I open this up, it's only going to say 147, and that is because they are not connected yet. If I would power this up, if I would connect the wire to this connector and place it here, and now you open this up, you will see it's going to show you the whole of resources you're using. 1470 is what is available for the moment. All right, so now we need to pull that wire to our other part, the other side. So I'm going to move my character a little bit more to the center here. So I can see my build down there. All right, let's go into a build camera, select the wire. We're going to connect that wire to our power hotspot. And uh, we only have 200 U on a wire. So that means we're going to have to do an interruption and then continue from there. So as long as the wire is green, it means we are okay. This is red. This is green. So that means the 200 U is right here. So let's uh, connect the wire. Now, to make sure that I don't miss it, I'm going to pull a wire up here in the sky. Replace it. So now I can walk to that point. It's going to be easier for me to know where the connector is in the floor. Connect from here to here and then connect that wire to our farm. Like that. Now this one is starting to mine. Also, let's delete that wire now that sticks out of the ground. There we go. Now we can see how much this is mining. This one is mining at a rate of 247 per hour. Now diminishing return starts at 1000 U per hour. That means that we cannot build more than four of these extractors on one location. And then we need to build a new set. So let's take this one here and place three more on that connector. So we have one, two, three, four. So now we have four of these, which is now mining at a rate of a little bit less than thousands. So we're going to place another wire here and we're going to reverse wire glitch from here, from this floor and connect that wire to that wire there on the bottom of the floor. That's the one where we're glitching our extractor on. Now we can extend this floor here and now we can snap one supply depot on that as well. Like this 
And now we're just going to connect a supply pipe from here to here, which is now is going to start charging up this one here as well. So if we now go into that, you will see that we are now producing 990 per hour and we have a storage of 2000. So every hour we will have 990 gold in our storage. If you wait a little bit longer, it will fill up the storage to 2000. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to prepare our inner extractors here. So first what we're going to do, we're going to take a floor here and we're going to snap a floor on each of these connectors so that we later on can then also pull a wire to this point here. Now we take this extractor and we're going to wire glitch them on that connector in the floor. So one, we're going to go to the side here. We're going to pull a wire from here and we're going to pull it to that other extractor. These are going to start working now as well. Now we can go to the floor here, reverse wire glitch and pull a wire from here to the connector in the floor. There we go. And if you want, you can delete the floors. We don't need to keep them. And now we're going to wire glitch a supply depot on each of these connectors. Now the only thing remaining is connecting the supply pipe from here to here which now is going to start generating all the gold we need for this. So we can see this one is doing at a rate of 990 per hour. Now you probably will need to use a stair or a ladder if you want to uh, reach the second floor. All right, and so now I have built a little bit of a platform around it so I can easily reach the parts as well. As you can see, I built some stairs that just allow me to go up and down if I need to. And then in the storage depot, you can go and collect the gold once it's all has been mined. Uh, this is going to take you two hours, as you can see, to fill up this storage here. But in total, you will have 8,000 of uh, gold, which is going to give you quite a nice sum of money. So anyway, I'm going to leave this working and I will be back in like two hours and then I'll show you how much we gained. All right, here we are at the farm. Two hours later, we have the supply post completely full with the gold. So let's just collect all the gold and store it into our inventory. And let's go and pick it all up. There we go. Now we have a very nice selection of gold in our inventory, 8,000. This is gonna give us a value of 2.8 million. Of course, this is not as impressive as an activated indium farm before Waypoint. But for now, gold is the best mineable deposit in No Man's Sky. Easily to farm, easily to just collect and sell. You can always build more supply depots if you want to, just to have more storage. And that is going to allow you to come back the next day and then collect all the gold and sell it. In the meantime, I'm working on another guide that is covering farming as well, which is going to talk about a few techniques you can do as a beginner and make money easily without too much hassle, but that is going to be for the next one. All right, so let's travel to the space station and let's see if we can sell our gold. Now, you will probably notice that we will be selling here at a loss. Let me check, uh, sell. We're selling at a loss of minus 2%. You can go and find yourself a better location, a better space station. You can find yourself trading post. You can find yourself archive, uh, whatever. You can see if any of them sells that at a higher demand. And then I would also just put a base computer there so it's easier to find it back every time if you want to go and sell the gold. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to sell the gold like that. And that is going to give us a good 2.4 million. And that's it. If I would have placed even more supply depots, I could come back tomorrow to collect even more gold, sell it again, and just do this every day, which is a nice and steady income. As I said before, this is not the best way to earn money in No Man's Sky, but if you just want to do a mineral farm, then gold farming is the best way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was an informative guide. If you liked this video, then don't forget to hit that thumbs up, and I will see you again next time. This was Beobam. Goodbye for now.